Today, we shall talk about political organization, state and stateless societies, form of government and law. Firstly, we will discuss about the political organization. We know that man is a social animal. He does not live in isolation, but in group. When he is in his group, in every sphere of his life, different kinds of interactions automatically develops in between he and his fellow members. Due to certain such interactions, competition starts among the members in the same group as well as in between the groups. For controlling, regulating and maintaining the use of physical forces that are vested externally and internally, certain rules are developed in the society. The society is thus held together by the system of rules. Social control, the system of rules and the working procedure either informally or formally slowly become as an organized form. The organization forcing it to do the goodwill for the members of the society is called political organization. In other words, political organization is an aspect of culture by which law and orders are maintained in the society. The term Political organization has been defined in various ways. According to Redcliffe Brown, political organization of a society is that aspect of the total organization which is concerned with the control and regulation of the use of physical force. According to Bales and Heuser, this that is the political organization is accomplished through a leader or a set of leaders who command the aspect and allegiance of the members of the group. The leaders maintain, puts within the political group, organize and direct community enterprises and conduct group activities such as welfare directed against neighboring units of the same order. Max Gluckman says that politics is concerned with problems of preserving law and order of assuring public control. Now, coming to the types of political organization in primitive societies. Forts and Ivan Pritchard have classified political systems into two types, stateless and state. These two terms are synonymously used as acephalus, a Greek word for without a head. Society and cephalus society. The characteristics of these categories of political system are as follows. Now, firstly, we'll talk about the stateless society. The stateless societies lack centralized authority, administrative machinery, and judicial institution. In short, they lack a government and in them, there are no sharp divisions of rank, status or wealth. Typically, the societies are small-scale organized into bands or tribes that make decisions through consensus decision-making rather than appointing permanent chiefs or kings. It is the segmentary lineage system which regulates political relations between territorial segments. 
The societies are simple and consist of a single cultural group that is culturally homogeneous. In stateless societies, it is the equilibrium between a numbers of structurally equivalent segments that maintains the political system. It is the keen group force that maintains order and serves as the locus for social control. The Noer of the Southern Sudan provides a good example of a stateless, that is, acephalous society. Coming to the state society, the state societies have centralized authority, administrative machinery and judicial institution. In short, a government and in which cleavages of wealth, privilege and status correspond to the distribution of power and authority. It is the administrative organization which primarily regulates political relations between territorial segments in state societies. State societies are culturally heterogeneous and comprise an amalgam of culturally diverse groups. It is the balance between different parts of the administrative organization that maintains the political system. There is a balance between power and authority on one side and obligation and responsibility on the other. In state societies, it is the military force which is the constituted judiciary machinery that maintains order. Elman service gives a fourfold scheme of development of human societies on the basis of socio-economic and political religion. They are the band, the tribe, the chiefdom, and the state. Let us discuss about the band. A band society is a small and the simplest type of socio-political organization. It is an autonomous group of people, generally consisting of a small keen group, no larger than an extended family or clan. In his book, The Notion of the Tribe, 1972, Martin Fried defined bands as small, mobile and fluid social formations with weak leadership that do not generate surpluses, pay taxes, or support a standing army. Bands are made up of nuclear families that live together and are loosely associated with the territory on which they hunt. Social order is maintained through the informal mechanisms of gossip, ridicule and avoidance. In other words, through public opinion, some historic examples include the Soshon of the Great Basin in the United States and the Bushmen of the Southern Africa.
The tribe is of course a larger society and tied together by familiar bonds. Family structures known as lineages, clan, moieties and fratries form the primary bonding mechanisms. The local groups that compose a traditional tribal society are communal and strongly social with members linked by kinship ties. Leadership is personal, charismatic and for special purposes only in tribal society there are no political offices containing real power and a chief is merely a man of influence, a sort of advisor. Good examples of tribes are the Yanomami of Brazil and Venezuela and the Kapauku Papuans of Indonesia. Chiefdom Chiefdoms have some formal structure integrating multi-community political units that organizes regional populations through a hierarchy of the chief or chiefs. Chiefdom is a form of political system or social organization more complex than a tribe or a band society and less complex than a state or a civilization. It is a level of political integration in which a society has a more or less permanent political leader that is a chief but no bureaucracy or professional administrators. The chief provides direction and authority for the society as a whole. Sometimes there is an advisory council as well. Robert L. Carnero defines chiefdom as an autonomous political unit comprising a number of villages or communities under the permanent control of a paramount chief. Chiefdoms are characterized by pervasive inequality and centralization of authority. At least two inherited social classes, that is the elite and commoner are present although an individual might change social class during a lifetime by extraordinary behavior. A single lineage or family of the elite class becomes the ruling elite of the chiefdom with the greatest influence, power and prestige. The classic examples of chiefdom political systems are found among the Tahitians of Polynesia and the Asante of Ghana. State. A state is one of the levels of political integration in which a society has a permanent, highly centralized political organization with an elite social class of rulers at the top. The bulk of the people are at the bottom of the pyramid of power. Anthropologist Robert Carnero defines the state as an autonomous political unit encompassing many communities within its territory and having a centralized government with the power to collect taxes, draft men for work or war and decree and enforce laws. They are associated with large territories, administrative bureaucracies, a high degree of specialization and large dense populations. Examples are ancient Mesopotamia, that is the ancient Iraq, the form of government. Government refers to the legislators, administrators and the arbitrators in the administrative bureaucracy who control a state at a given time and to the system of government by which they are organized. 
According to some anthropologists, including Morgan, a primitive society has no government. However, most of the modern anthropologists do not agree with this view. The following form of governments may be observed in different primitive societies. They are oligarchy, monarchy, gerontocracy, democracy, theocracy. Let us first discuss the oligarchy. An oligarchy is a form of government in which most of the political power effectively rests with a small segment of society, typically the people who have the most wealth, military strength, ruthlessness or political influence. In a band organization, a band leader is selected. He may be the chief of the band, the man with skills on hunting and war, eloquence and wisdom is chosen as their leader. Some city-states from ancient Greece were oligarchies. Next, monarchy. Monarchy is a government in which the supreme power is lodged in the hands of a monarch who reigns over a state or territory, usually for life and by hereditary right. In current usage, the word monarchy generally refers to a traditional system of hereditary rule. Monarchies are associated with political or socio-cultural hereditary rule in which monarchs rule for life and pass the responsibilities and power of the position to their children or family when they die. Talking about gerontocracy. Gerontocracy is a form of government in which an entity is ruled by leaders who are significantly older than most of the adult population. Often, the political structure is such that political power within the ruling class accumulates with age so that the oldest hold the most power. In this system, the elders rule the entire boundary of the community. Elders are expected to take decisions and as a result, they have to spend much of their time in the discussion of public affairs. The executions of decision taken by elders are vested to the younger age group. Now, let us talk about democracy. Democracy is a form of government in which power ultimately comes from the people who are governed. Ideally, this includes equal participation in the proposal, development and passage of legislation into law. It is a government which depends on the consent of the governed, that is, of the people. It is also sometimes called a government by the people or a government in which the people have 
sovereignty. Sovereignty means the supreme power to take decision, the power of which there could be no other high authority. In democracy, the supreme power is exercised by the people. Let us talk about the theocracy. Theocracy is a form of government ruled by priest or religious authority. It is believed that it is a state or government in which God is sovereign and religion is the law. The head of the authority takes all religious and political responsibility. The member of the society is bound by set custom and social rules within the framework of their religion. The head supervises his subjects to do their activities sanctioned by the religion. Law. Some sort of political organization is necessary to keep a control over the behavior of the members of every society. This political organization makes laws of different kinds for the behavior of the members. Different scholars have given various definitions. According to Hobble, a law is a social norm the infraction of which is sanctioned in threat or in fact by the application of physical force by a party possessing the socially recognized privilege of so acting. According to Bronis Law Malinowski, law is the obligation of one person and the rightful claim of another sanctioned not by mere psychological motive but by a definite social machinery of binding force based upon mutual dependence. According to Majumdar and Madan, law consists of a set of principles which permits the use of force to maintain political and social organization within a territory. From the above definitions, it can be said that law of a society is a body of principles which underlay its activities as a state and also permit the use of force to maintain political and social organization within a territory. In short, laws are those rules which are recognized by the state to regulate and maintain the behavior of its members. Law is called an institution because it has a sanction behind it. Let us now talk about the nature of primitive law. Some people thought that since primitive people mostly kept quarreling among themselves, there must have been only criminal law applicable to them. But an anthropologist Levy has shown that in primitive societies, there are civil laws also along with criminal laws because there are some working principles in primitive societies about their mutual relations, rights of property and many other things due to different social situations of different individuals. These are some of the basic nature and characteristic of primitive law. They are firstly, primitive law is based 
on clan or bond of kinship secondly primitive law is very much similar to moral principles and public opinion that is it is based on customary law.